Hello everybody, it is Sherry from Global Kingdom Network, <laughs> sending out your hugs and kisses, your daily dose of love. How are you today? I pray that everybody is doing well. I'm coming on with episode 9 of today's journey, so come along with me. I pray that each and every episode is helping you, is elevating you to the next level, is increasing your wisdom, is giving you food for thought, is helping guide you in the right direction by the Holy Spirit, by the Word of God, because you know I'm a scripture girl. Anyhow, I want to start out today by talking about ministry how, to, how we operate in ministry. What does the Bible say about ministry? What is the structure of the church? What, what, what have the apostles and the evangelists of the New Testament, what have they told us um, to continue on and to do to continue to bring in the harvest and walk in ministry until the day of our Lord Jesus or we're raptured up, either one. I want to start today in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 8. Amen. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. Always doing it. You know it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 8. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. See, a lot of times in ministry, people are keeping a tally of, well, you know, look at his ministry. He only won like 10 souls, you know, over the, over the past year. And, well, look at their ministry. They only had four healings this year, you know. That is not of God. The word explicitly says that it doesn't matter who plants and who waters, but that we all should be doing that. And then God will bring the increase. It is God that gets all the glory. So in ministry, whatever you're doing for the kingdom of God, always make sure that you give honor due to the Lord God, Jehovah Jesus, Holy Spirit, the triune Godhead. Give them always the honor and the glory for the increase that comes on your life, for the increase of souls, for the increase of healings, for the increase of miracle, for the increase of finances, for the increase of wisdom, for increase of people to serve, for increase of whatever is happening in your ministry. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right, so I want to also talk to you about spotting the fake. Um, there's a lot I want to talk about. Ministry, treatment of church members, false teachers and prophets, um, doctrine of demons. One thing I want to say, oh yeah. Uh, the parable of the sower. I want you to seek that out. Um, I mean the parable of the seeds. Of how some fall on stony ground. I'm going to put that scripture down below. And I want you to read it and seek it out. As to why when you're doing the ministry. Sometimes it doesn't take. Or it only takes a little. Or people fall back. Or there is much fruit. Amen. Always remember, always keep on the forefront that it is God who brings the increase. Never walk in pride and think that you have brought um, increase as far as doing the the um, um, the the supernatural part of fruit bearing. Yes, we are to bear fruit, but when God brings the increase. And you're walking according to God's ways. And you're walking in obedience. And you're doing what the Lord has asked you to do. And you're fulfilling the call that God has called you to do in ministry. 
you will bear fruit. And God is the one who brings that fruit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who draws the people. And then God will put like a cap on it. God will bring the increase. Amen. So let's go on and let's start talking about these things. Okay. But I want to make sure that like I kind of want to break it all down. Okay, let's go to Acts chapter 14 verses 21 through 23 acts chapter 14 verses 21 through 23 this is like the products of ministry amen so they're in iconium and it says let's make sure i read the right verses 21 through 23 chapter 14 This is what we're doing. So when we're doing ministry, right, and people get saved or people get healed or people are unchurched, um, have never been in church or have fallen away from church, we are to strengthen the converts. This is part of the ministry is to strengthen the converts. That's why there's the, the fivefold part of ministry that the Lord has set into place as structure, apostles, prophets. Um, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, because it's not about what title you have. It's about what function you're to do in the ministry to bring about the great harvest, okay? And so when they were in Iconium, uh, they were talking about in Acts, 14 verse 21 and when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples they returned to listeria iconium and antioch strengthening the souls of the disciples exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying we must through many tribulations enter into the kingdom of god which means even though the, and the Bible talks about there's specific scripture where we will go through trials and t tribulations and heartache, but Jesus says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So that means we keep pressing in. We keep pressing for it. Even though ministry can be hard, even though, um, people can wear you out, even though, um, a lot of people don't understand how much it takes to take time out or, or travel or, study the word or get revelation from God or or uh, preach the word or do services and all that a lot of people don't understand they just come to a service and they feel you know they get touched and all that but they don't understand a true servant someone who is operating in the Bible ministry in the church who is really serving the Lord puts time in to hear what God wants wants accomplished for that day or that service or that church or the meeting or whatever it is. Amen. So you're going to keep, you might go through stuff, but you have to keep going. He says, he says, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God, no matter what warfare, no matter what obstacles, um, you can pray and use your authority to break them obstacles, you know, have the intercessors pray, um, and bind up things and loose things so that your will will be, you know, the, your will that God has called you to do. You continue to walk in that will that God is asking you to accomplish. Amen. So then verse 23 says, says, so when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commanded them to the Lord in whom they have believed. So. They appointed elders in the church, and that's why there's structure in ministry, structure in the church. God set it up this way. God showed them how. You know, he told Peter upon, upon, uh, Peter upon Petros, upon this rock, I will, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. And so even though we may have setbacks, we still have to press forth. And so part of ministry is doing that and strengthening the souls and um, exhorting the people. Even when we feel uh, weighed down or tired, you must take a break. 
don't wear yourself out. Don't wear your heart out. I mean, we're flesh. Um, don't over um, exasperate yourself to the point where you're exhausted all the time. Because God can't use you like that. He really can't. And this is why leaders need to sit in that place with God refresh because I see a lot of leaders I see it and as a prophet I can see these things um, by the spirit realm is that they will be so overworked and not have enough servants and be under budget or you know and 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 they're working extra hard or two jobs to make the ends meet in the church when the church really should all be pulling together as one in one accord um I see a lot of a lot of leaders who then start to have problems or they have personal problems. Um, and one thing leaders should never do is never bring your problems in the pulpit. Never. Why? Because that is God's place. Once you step out from your personal life into a church, into a meeting, into a stadium, into a cell meeting, into a hospital, into wherever you're going to do the will of God, being obedient, you leave your personal stuff aside. You cannot let that, you cannot let that affect the ministry that the Lord is now, when you step into that position, that the Lord is ready to mantle you or anoint you for the work of him, the Lord, the work of heaven, you cannot be upset and be all this and that and do ministry because it, it spews out to the people, especially those who are, are intercession or prophets. Uh, you pick, you can pick those things up. And a lot of times I can tell when a leader is operating in, in, uh, how can I say this nicely? Um, sin or or just is um maybe off track is if they pray for me or lay hands on me I get a headache and that's how I know they're they're not on the right path that's how the Lord the Lord has taught me to know and then I'll go and I'll pray you know and pray for that 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 leader so that they could be refreshed in the time of the Lord you know what I'm saying so let's go on here now. I'm going to get deep because this is something that we all really need to grasp. If you're leaders or if you're going to go into ministry or God is calling you into ministry and this younger generation that is rising up that God wants to use so mightily. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Uh, let's see here. I want to go to Ephesians 2, Ephesians chapter 2, 19, verse 22. So Ephesians 2, 19, verse 22. So always remember that Christ is our cornerstone. Verse 19, now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens. So now you have converts, you have, you're, you're strengthening the, the, the souls in the, in the church or wherever you're ministering or evangelizing or whatever. You're doing that. And now uh, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. That's how God set it in order. The apostles first and then the prophets second. And we're going to read about that. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone, amen, um, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. See, that's how you start to go from glory to glory is because you become uh, built up by by the fivefold, by your brothers and your sisters, and you, you grow together. You're building on the foundation um, of apostles and prophets giving direction and 
and and and and hearing from the Lord for what is to happen or what the Lord wants to happen in the church and shifting and bringing changes or bringing structure or whatever it is and now you become the whole building being fitted together and that's how you grow it says grow into a holy temple in the Lord and then you become a dwelling place for the spirit of God that's how you can tell when you disunity is happening in a church is not growing there's no uh agreement you can pick those things up in the spirit there is church splits there is um well we can go on and on about that but i'm not going to go on about that so let's move on but these are ways how you can tell that things are happening in the church that we need to watch out for. And so let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now we're going to get into the meat. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 11. The great apostasy it's called. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. See, that's why it's important for us to build together like the scripture verse that I just read. That's why it's so important so we don't fall into this trap as a people of God. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. I've been, I've been where the church um, is split over. You can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't do this, you can't do that. That's not God. You can't have a glass of wine. Uh, you're not supposed to drink. Uh, you know, whatever. I don't drink personally. I don't, um, if someone has a glass of wine with their dinner, it, that's fine with me, but you can't be drunk because it's, the Bible says, don't be drunk in excess, but be drunk with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So there is, there is a clause that the Bible has about drinking. You know, you can't do that, but um, verse six, if you instruct the brethren in these things, okay, let's go back. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. In everything, give thanks. That's what the Bible says. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Pray over your stuff. Pray over your food. Pray over the thing. Sanctify your stuff. Sanctify your family. And he says, if you instruct the brethren in these things, which I'm telling you and instructing you, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise prof profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. So I will put the scriptures down below so you could read for yourself. That is what he's saying. Okay. These are the things that have to need to take place in the structure of the, to bring structure in the church, you know, and I know in, in church, there's a lot of people that, that go online and just get degrees to be pastors or not even affiliated with anybody or go online to be a prop or they get, they call them, start calling themselves a prophet. Did God call you to, to be a prophet? Are you, are you ordained to be a prophet or, you know, there's a lot of people out of position in the church. And I believe that God is ready to put people back in the position or in the right position so that we can move forward for the glory of God. Amen. Let's go to first Timothy five seventeen through 25. First, Timothy 5, 17 through 25. Ready? 
Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. You say, well, I don't have to give money to the church, and, you know, well, the pastor shouldn't be getting a portion of the money. Well, I'm reading scripture right here. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you should not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages, meaning that that, that ox is probably eating some things along the way and is gaining strength, right? Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Don't let gossip take over. Don't let, you know, that you say, you know, you hear one thing in one ear and then by the time you get to the fifth person, they're telling a completely different story. Well, God says that ought not to be. Uh, those who are sinning, rebuke in the presence of all that the rest also may fear God. Huh? How about when we start doing that in the church again? Lord God, help us. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels, which means the angels take witness, write things down, you know, take account of what's happening around us. This is scripture. That you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing with partiality. Do things with all your heart. Give with all your heart. God says he wants you to give. Don't give if you're not going to give with, with a whole heart. You know, if, if you're not, if you don't feel that that workman is worthy of their hire and whatever office they're serving, and then go to a different church to where you can find what is um, your part in that church to serve and to give and to build up that body. Amen. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. So, he's not saying get drunk. He's saying use it for, uh, if, you know, stomach's sake, if your stomach's bothered, infirmities. Remember, they didn't have all those, all the treatments or the tums and stuff that we have. You don't have to drink a glass of wine to fix your stomach. You take a tum or something. <laughs> So don't go crazy on that one. Don't, don't, you know. Um, some men's sins are clearly evident, preceding them to judgment. But those of some men follow later. Likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident, and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. You will be able to tell a false teacher, a prophet, apostle. You will see. This. Eventually, the sin comes out. You will see the good works that the Bible says is clearly evident. And um, those that are otherwise, it won't be hidden. Eventually, you will be found out. You will be sought out. Amen. So, that's how you tell who is false and who is real. Okay? So, let's read. Um, let's see. There's so much. There's so much here to read. And I'm not going to have time for all of it. But you should read First Timothy chapters four five and six all together to get a bigger picture okay now i want to talk to you about um first peter chapter four verse seven through nineteen serving for the glory of god now i want to talk to you about this first peter chapter four Verses 7 through 19. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Does that mean that you let the person sin? No. You cover that person. You cover that person in prayer. You cover that person by having conversation. You cover that person by having wisdom to help them out of the situation. You, you, you work together for the good of each other. Amen. You don't condemn. Be hospitable towards one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So the grace that God has extended to you, we must extend to others. Amen. 
If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And this is why it talks about suffering for God's glory. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when he, his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and, uh, and, and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Amen. You can't worry about other people if they're blaspheming God. You can only try to bring them into the faith and 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 nourish their souls and and bring structure and bring uh, the gifts of 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 edification and and prophecy, which I'm going to read in a second here. But let's go to First John because I'm going to wrap this up. It's getting a little long. First John chapter five, one through four. Oh wait, first John. Oh, I'm in the second one, sorry. First John chapter five, one through four. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, our faith. So with, with whatever trials, with whatever is pressing in, in our ministry, whatever is pressing in your personal life, whatever is, we got to come through it. We got to plow through it. We got to keep moving forward. We got to keep pressing in. We got to keep stirring ourselves up in the most holy faith. Because listen, people will fail us. People are flawed. You know, people sin. But God is good and righteous and will always direct us into the proper way as long as we stay obedient to what he's called us to do. Amen. So let's go in here because I want to talk to the the last thing first corinthians 14 22 25 therefore tongues are for a sign not to those who believe but to unbelievers it's for edica edification it's to build ourselves up in our most holy faith god has given us that as a gift to those who believe not to, but prophesying is not for unbelievers but for those who believe Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues and there comes in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? Probably. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues and there comes in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? Verse 24. But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all. He is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. And then 39 and 40 in chapter uh, 14 says, Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. You can also go in here in, in Ephesians. It talks about um, the works and the body of Christ. One is the arm, one is the leg, one is the head, uh, one is the neck, I'm sorry, or whatever. Christ is the head. And this here is scripture to prophesy. It doesn't mean that everybody is a prophet, but to prophesy for edification, for building up. This is how we stay strengthened. The prophets come in and they speak the word of the Lord. It says right here, it says, if an unbeliever, uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all and he is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And then he falls down on his, how many times I know as a prophet, when I prophesy to people, they're like, 
wow, how could you know that? And it's you're not prophesying in condemnation. You're prophesying to bring out that which either needs to go or that which needs to be brought to the forefront or that which needs to be rooted out or something that needs to be built up to impart um, the things that you need maybe to birth you into ministry. So that's hogwash if people say that prophets aren't for today. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. So I want you to go back in and I want you to read these scriptures. I'll put them in the, in the, in the, um, what do you call it? Uh, all the scriptures down in the bottom under the thing. But remember, workmen are worthy of their hire. Um, we're all to, to make sure that the souls that come in, we're to disciple, we're to nourish their souls, we're to take care of one another we're, we're to walk in the fruits of the spirit you know uh prefer one another we're to um not fall into doctrines of demo demons we're not to be leaders who bring our personal um circumstances into the ministry when we're when it's time to minister that's god's time and that's one of the problems in the church is that people are, and listen, don't get me wrong, because there is much wisdom in godly counsel. That's not what I'm talking about. You do that on your personal time. But when you step into ministry, that is God's time. And God, you want God to be able to move and do what he needs to do for that specific time, date and day that you are working in ministry. Amen. And we want to be obedient. So you have to navigate a team. Okay. You have to navigate your team. Some, pe some people may want to serve diligently. But aren't the proper fit. That's okay. Find where they fit. Don't condemn them. Find where they fit. Counsel them. Get to know them. Where are you know, their gifts. We all, I'm telling you, we're all going to need to come into the unity for this latter, this latter move of God, this greater glory of God. We're going to come into the unity. We're going to love one another. That is the bottom of God said, without love, we are nothing. So we need to start operating in these things that I have mentioned to you. And I want you to go and read all the scriptures and study for yourself to show thyself approved. Amen. Ministry needs to start being about the glory realm of God, the manifested presence of God on earth as it is in heaven, and less about pride, separation, um, disunity, and division, because that is the works of the devil, and Jesus has come to destroy that. I love yous. Until next time, I'll see you soon.